In this video, I'll give you a few tips to using the boundary tool. The boundary tool is found right here. It's very simple to use. You open the dialog and it will open here on the right. The first thing you need to do is select whether you want to create your boundary with the mouse or the sew head. I usually use the sew head because then it uh, coincides exactly with the corners of the block or border that are on the actual quilt. So it's a great tool to use the sew head for. Here you want to choose the method of whether you want your pattern to morph to fit or maintain ratio. Maintain ratio will keep the pattern in its normal shape but make it fit into the area of the boundary. Morph to fit will warp or skew the pattern to fit into an odd shaped um, rectangle or square. And so I always use morph to fit um, to get it to fit right in there. Margin is the area inside the outer edge of the boundary that will not have a pattern in it. So it will, the pattern will be that much smaller so it fits within that area. So you can set that to be whatever you want. Let me change it to half an inch, 0.5. And now I'll click Start. I'm going to use my sew head, and so after I click Start, I will see on the lightning stitch interface uh, an option to place. So I'm going to move my sew head to the corner of my block and say Place. And then again, Place. And I'm going around the block and I'm putting one uh, point, I, I click place, at each corner and I can see on the screen that a point is being added and the line is being connected and when I add the fourth point it will close up that space. Now that boundary is number zero and it shows over here on the right side boundary zero and that the area, the margin is 0.5. If I want to create another one, I can change it to 0.25 or whatever I like. And I can create a, a second boundary for block number two. And I say start. Now I can start at any point and I can go in any direction around it clockwise or counterclockwise. I couldn't go um, crisscross across my block. That wouldn't work. There we go. So you can see that that is boundary number one and it has a margin of 0.25. If I had made a mistake and I really meant for it to be 0.5, I can go there and change the margin to 0.5. And if I don't, if I put one of those points in the wrong spot, I can delete the entire boundary and start over. So there are some options there to make it easy to use so that you get a good result. You always have to click Start to begin. Now, I can use a pattern that I have on my screen there and just hover over until it warps and then let go. So I picked that up with the mouse and dragged it over or I can click on the pattern and click on the box. Either one will make it fit into the shape. Now I want to show you also that I can choose a pattern that is multiples. So I'm going to turn this flower into multiples by using my more repeats tool. So I click more, 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 and I have several of them. And now I can create a boundary for that as if it was a border or a sash. Actually, I really like this for sashings because you have a nice rectangle shape that you want to fill with your pattern. For borders, I most likely would um, use other tools because I would want them to fit together with the corners, but it's okay. I'm sure you're going to get the gist of how this works with multiples as well. 
So I would pick this pattern up and slip it over that area that is the boundary and let go. And you can see that it has morphed to fit that area. So there are several ways that you can use the tool. Now, if I don't want those boundaries anymore, I can come in here and delete them. So that gives you a few ways that you can easily create boundaries and drop your patterns in, have them fit just right.